Ah, we're back with our favorite genius lady boy. I mean, ladies boy. Let's just go with Casanova. Kintaro, who's now happily working in a handmade noodle shop. A customer complains that the noodles aren't firm enough, and the shop owner explains that Kintaro is still learning. Shortly, the daughter of the shop owner, Noriko, arrives. Due to her charming personality, the customer changes his mind and compliments Kintaro's noodles instead, making Kintaro more enthusiastic. Later, a businessman named Kogure comes to see Noriko's family, bringing simpy gifts which makes Noriko blush. Kogure then asks Noriko to come and see one of his ships someday. Before he leaves, Noriko thanks Kogure for saving her father from a fatal accident. That evening, Noriko brings Kintaro some flowers. She tells him that her current goal is to arrange flowers for the person she loves. A few days later, Noriko and Kogure have a date on the businessman's ship. Kogure proposes to Noriko and says he loves her, which leads to them kissing. While wandering the city that night, Kintaro spots Mr. Kogure with his hands around a woman and realizes he's a playboy. Kintaro follows Kogure and finds him discussing his plans with the lady. He wants to use his marriage with Noriko to get her family's property and divorce her. He also reveals that he had planned the accident of Noriko's father. Kintaro draws Kogure's attention and begs him not to do such mean things to Noriko. However, Kogure only pummels him into the ground with his black belt karate skills and threatens to take him out if he snitches on him. When he returns to the noodle shop later, the bruised up Kintaro tells Noriko he just fell. He feels pity for Noriko because of her love for Kogure. Later, Noriko heads out on a date, and Kintaro's chill goes out the window. At a horse race, Mr. Kogure and Noriko watch the game. He asks for a reply to her proposal, and she says she can't make up her mind. He tries to make a move on her, but Kintaro comes between them. Kogure ends up making out with Kintaro without realizing it. At home, Noriko wonders if she's being too stubborn with Kogure. She speaks with Kintaro, who is still pale from the makeout session with Kogure earlier. She asks Kintaro if he could stay with her parents if she gets married. Kintaro asks her to think more about it and accidentally makes a terrible remark about Mr. Kogure, which makes Noriko leave in anger. Later that night, Noriko heads up to the ship to look for Mr. Kogure and sees Kintaro begging him to stay away from her because she's a nice person. Kogure gets angry and says Noriko is nothing but a brat. He fails to notice that Noriko is behind him. Kintaro tries to cover up for Kogure. Noriko can tell he's lying to her. Kogure attempts to rough Kintaro up, but Kintaro takes him out with three quick punches. He quickly worries that he's misused the lessons from the Kenpo Dojo. The next day, Mr. Sakura says he prefers Kintaro's noodles to the shop owner's. Well, well, well. That isn't surprising. Our boy is a genius after all. Kintaro decides to leave and goes to say his farewell to Noriko. She tells him she feels much better and shows him a flower she arranged while thinking about him. She struggles to reveal to Kintaro that he's the one she loves. Kintaro is totally oblivious to this and says they'll have to find the one she arranged the flowers for. While Noriko laughs at his jokes, she's actually crying inside. Like a lot. In the next scene, Kintaro bids the entire family farewell and rides away on his bicycle as Noriko watches him ride to his next job. Kintaro spots several athletes in a swimming school, and one of them, Ayuko Hayami, catches his attention. He thinks her eyes contain an animalistic glint that awakens the animal in his heart. Kintaro screams about how much he wants to see the untamed wilderness hiding beneath her clothes. Okay. He follows her into the school and asks if he can work as a swimming instructor. Shortly after that, Kintaro is at the pool, ready for the tryout. He finally sees Ayuko in her swimsuit and admires her amazing body and swimming skills. Ayuko asks him to swim so they can see his skills. Kintaro eagerly obliges the request. As he leaps into the pool with graceful poise, he quickly starts drowning because, oh well our boy here can't swim. After he's done, they tell him he's supposed to be taking swimming classes and not teaching. For a genius, you, you didn't quite plan that out now, did you? He asks who's in charge and learns it's Ayuko, who tells him she can't hire him and asks him to leave. Instead of tucking his tail and doing the walk of shame, Kintaro challenger to a swimming race one month from that day. He then demands that she hire him as an instructor if he wins. As he drools over her, one of the instructors inform him that Ayuko is a gold medalist. The next day, Kintaro attends to some of the children at the swimming school. He explains that he may have started this job because of Ayuko, but also loves the children. And the fact that other instructors are also beautiful women. While Kintaro plays with the children, Ayako observes him closely. I'm pretty sure she's just extra cautious that Kintaro doesn't do something strange to the kids. There we go, I'm not... <laughs> exactly. I do the same if a guy I hired was wagging his tongue around like a lunatic in a pool filled with kids. Anyway, Ayuko corrects Kintaro, saying that his manner of teaching is too childish and that he needs to train children who'll be future winners. 
he promises he'll do his best to produce results. He also mentions that he wouldn't want her to feel bad when he wins her one month from now. Balls of steel. Or gold, I guess, in this case. Uh, the next day, Kentaro helps some children get accustomed to the water, but realizes it's tough to get results. He goes to one of the trainers for advice, and she tells them he can just force their heads underwater if they can't do it, as Chief Ayuko has instructed. Kentaro carefully takes note of this in his trusted notebook. Of course, he still finds the time to draw the attractive trainer while he's at it. Later, the students and trainers compete, and Kintaro starts seeing them as dolphins while Ayuko is the ringmaster. He runs to Ayuko to let him join in and experience her training too. When he gets into the water, Ayuko is surprised by how much progress Kintaro has made within a month, but she says he's still no match for her. When they're done, she challenges him to a short race and gets excited. Kintaro excitedly swims after her, but our boy's a little too distracted of her body. He accidentally gets his face between her legs, which makes her let out a sound that uh, you would normally find in uh, something we can't show. When they get out, she realizes that Kintaro is excited about something other than swimming. She gets angry that he's polluted the sanctuary of the pool, but her feistiness excites Kintaro even more. So Ayuko knocks him out with a cold, quick punch. Later that night, Kintaro wakes up outside. Thinking he got fired, he decides he'll return when things calm down. At the swimming school, the instructors inform Ayuko how they've improved the course curriculum by helping the kids love water and how it made it easier for them to learn. Ayuko notices that the children are really enjoying themselves and remembers how her dad also made her love water, which helped her learn to swim better. She realizes that maybe her methods have been too rigid. She also discovers that it was Kintaro that introduced the method. Shortly after, a parent brings her kid and thanks Ayuko for helping her kid overcome her fear of being in the water. The child asks for Kintaro, and it was there when Ayuko realized she lost against Kintaro. She wishes she could invite him back, but realizes it's too late. Our golden boy is already on his way to his next target. I mean job. While riding through a mountain pass, Kintaro encounters a lady named Reiko Terayama driving a motorcycle past him. When she stops, their eyes meet and her beauty astounds him. Kintaro loses it as he watches Reiko drink water on her bike in a really cultured manner. When she reaches peak culture, Reiko drives away and her boy decides to chase after her. On his bicycle. Needless to say, he eats her dust. So he ends up simply praying that their paths cross again. Later that day, Kintaro arrives at his new workplace as a worker in an estate that belongs to one of the richest men in Kyoto, Daitoku Terayama. While working, he meets his boss's daughter, Reiko Terayama. As usual, our boy gets too excited after seeing such beauty. He always does get the hots for his boss's daughters, don't he? Our boy got a death wish or something? That night, he writes how the town he's currently in is filled with women who send shivers down his spine. <laughs> Kintaro, of course, wonders if he'll finally settle there. Later, Kintaro breaks several plates while staring at Reiko. While Reiko was kind, Kintaro's supervisor wasn't. He punishes him by making him practice singing under a waterfall. <laughs> Kintaro sees Reiko the next day and wonders what's going on through her mind. He later gets assigned the job he loves the most, cleaning hot chick's toilets. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> As always, he starts to straddle it, letting his degenerate mind go wild. Of course, he once again fails to realize that Reiko is behind him. Not long after, Kintaro finds the cup Reiko was drinking from earlier. Our boy decides to give it a proper tasting. Since he wants dessert, he also goes through all of her stuff and gives them a taste too. Kintaro gets caught by a supervisor. Oh, and they don't hesitate to fire him. Despite his efforts to beg for his job, our boy gets thrown out. Unwilling to give up because the samurai spirit, Kintaro camps outside hoping something will happen. In the morning though, Kintaro decides to give up and leave if nothing happens soon. At that moment, he sees Reiko ride a taxi and follows her. He follows her into an abandoned building. Inside, Kintaro discovers that Reiko is the hot biker chick he met in the mountain pass. He couldn't stop watching Reiko pamper her beloved motorcycle and get caught. She tells him she's attracted to her bike and isn't interested in men. <clears throat> She's a motorsexual. Then notices Kintaro's uh, kingdom is in full attention and realizes he wants her. Reiko says that she'll be willing to do some cultural exchange with him if Kintaro can beat her in a race. So they both race, with Reiko on her motorcycle and Kintaro on his trusted steed. Reiko easily passes Kintaro, of course, making him realize he can't make it. Normally it would take half a day to go through the mountain pass by bicycle, so Kintaro decides to take a shortcut. He jumps off the bridge with Reiko as his motivation. Oh man, I have no words for this guy. 
Meanwhile, Reiko cuts a man in a Porsche and almost gets him into an accident. Kentaro hooks himself to the Porsche to gain more speed, but the Porsche owner drives like a madman after Reiko. When the Porsche stops, Kentaro gets launched at the power lines but still manages to ride his bike on them. This just goes to show that there is just absolutely nothing a man won't achieve with enough motivation. Reiko is surprised that Kentaro has gone this far and decides to amp up the speed. But Kentaro isn't showing signs of giving up soon. They both reach a point where the bridge ends. Kentaro jumps and continues forward. But Reiko stops out of fear. Reiko is astounded by Kentaro's determination and ability to beat her beloved motorcycle. She's sad though that he's now gone. When Kentaro emerges from a bush below the bridge and keeps riding, Reiko chases him, screaming that she wants him to make a mess out of her. Meanwhile, Kintaro rides around like he got his noodle scrambled while chanting, Study! Thank you! <laughs> With no signs of stopping anytime soon. I guess he'll just do that on his way to his next job then. As for his next job, Kintaro applies for work at an animation studio. The studio owner goes hard on him, but a lady named Chie offers him tea, and Kintaro gets the job. When it's time for work, Kentaro realizes that all the studio employees are still asleep, and their mornings begin late. Kentaro reveals that he's a production administrator in training, and his work is to organize the production process. As he works with Chie, he learns something new and writes it in his notebook. Chie compliments his desire to learn, and as for Kentaro, well, as always, our thirsty hero admires her body. After that, Kentaro sees the top animator drawing a picture of a woman. He learns the picture is for one of the productions and chips in his suggestions since he is a good artist and pretty much an expert on anything lady-related at this point. Shortly after, a woman sponsors the production and the film's author, Mr. Ngawa, arrives at the studio. Kentaro realizes that Mr. Ngawa is really popular and asks for his autograph. The sponsor chides him for disturbing Ngawa, but Ngawa gladly obliges his request. After that, the sponsor discusses tight deadlines of one and a half months with a studio boss. Later, Kentaro gathers up the pictures that the animators have drawn. As he leaves, the entire team asks him to get their food at a restaurant called Matsunoya. The animators don't eat very well because of their work, which worries Kentaro. He decides to make vegetable soup for them, and Chie notices and commends him as she emerges from the nearby restroom. After she leaves, Kentaro can't resist the urge to hug the toilet that Chie had just used. Well, we shouldn't be surprised at this point. In fact, I think we should be worried if he couldn't do this. When the boss comes in, Kentaro gets so startled that he cuts a bit of his boss's hair off with the knife in his hands. So, Kentaro gets a swollen face and continues his cooking. Kentaro later notices that one of the animator's tables is messy and decides to arrange it. When the animator comes, he punches Kentaro into a trash can for cleaning his table and making it hard for him to find what he needs. Yeah, that that's... Yeah, I mean, I guess Kentaro just didn't know that artists just really love messy stuff. Shortly after, the sponsor comes to the studio complaining that the filming hasn't begun. The boss explains that they may have to extend the schedule because of the steep requirements. But the sponsor is just interested in the schedule. She threatens to destroy the studio if they don't complete the film. The life of an artist. When she leaves, the boss tries to motivate the men to speed up their work. But they all give up when they realize the director has been in an accident. Chie thanks Kentaro for helping her and starts to beat herself up for having a meaningless job of just painting cells. Kentaro explains to her how beautiful animation is and how there aren't any useless jobs. His words motivate her. Later, all the animators keep bringing up reasons why the animation can't work except if they have friends who do CGI. And this is back in the day. <laughs> so... Wanting to help, Kentaro calls Madame President who promises to help out however she can. Kentaro goes all out helping the studio, doing anything they needed, like carrying the drawings to the hospital for the director to check. When one of the animators asks for a swimming video, Kentaro calls Ayuko who gladly films herself swimming for him. This makes it look like it isn't that bad an idea to quit our jobs and travel the world, right? I mean, how else would you garner such a useful list of people, right? Kentaro works tirelessly to provide whatever the studio needs to finish the animation. He even calls Noriko to motivate the animators. Of course, Kentaro doesn't forget to note his observations during the process, such as how the animator likes girls like Noriko. When the boss mentions that the voice actress is bailed, Kentaro calls Naoko and her friend. Okay. Eventually, the boss realizes the last reel won't get to the lab just in time, so Kentaro asks Reiko to help them out with it. Eventually, the animated movie is played at a cinema, and the entire team watches excitedly. 
However, it seems only Kintaro is excited by the film, and he gets worried that he's screwed up. When the movie ends, the entire crowd erupts in applause, and the sponsor congratulates the studio boss. Then one of the animators mentions that Kintaro is gone again. All the ladies are angry that he's left and decide to chase after him. Chia doesn't follow them because of all the work she has left to do. Meanwhile, Kintaro drives away on his trusted bicycle, the Crescent Moon. At night, Chia cries as she remembers how much Kentaro has done by teaching her how fun her job could be. Yeah, that was a surprisingly wholesome episode. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.